Good morning, DFC NAS family. We are so excited to be with you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you're getting uh, logged on as we get started uh, with our service this morning. Um, I want to just remind you to like uh, and share and comment uh, throughout this uh, service this morning. Engage with us. Uh, Pastor Dave will be online uh, to engage with you as well. And uh, we're just excited about what God's going to do this morning. Things are different, uh, but we believe that Jesus is with us, that Jesus is with you this morning, and uh, uh, that we're going to have church. Even though we're not together, we're still going to have church. So um, just a couple of announcements this morning. We just want you to remember to be checking your email, be checking the Facebook page, uh, checking the website for updates. Um, as of right now, uh, everything is canceled for this week. Um, but as you know, information is changing rapidly, so that could all change uh, at any given moment. So we'll try to keep you informed as best we can, but if you'll do your part in checking uh, back at these pages, that'll be a great help to us as well. So um, just wanted to remind you about that. I want to share a scripture with you this morning from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? We want to start this morning uh, just with a couple of songs, but we want to start with a, um, an old familiar hymn that's one of our favorites, and just a reminder um, of the peace that we can find uh, in Christ this morning. We hope that you'll worship with us. Worship with us while you're at home today, wherever you are.
so thankful for that promise this morning. In Hebrews uh, chapter 13, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, I'm thankful for that this morning, for that reminder that, you know what? God is still God today. God is still on the throne, and God is still good today. And uh, he is still the giver of hope and the giver of peace, and we can trust in him today. And I'm so thankful for that this morning. Would you sing this with us? You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I for us to still gather together, Lord, and to still meet with you and to hear your word this morning. Father, we're so thankful for that blessing. And God, though things are different today and we're meeting in a different format, uh, God, I just pray that you would use this time together in a powerful way. 
God, I pray that you would speak to us today. I pray that you would open our hearts, that you would open our ears, that you would open our minds, God, to what you have for us today, Lord. Help us to hear you. May we sense your presence with us wherever we are today. God, we love you. We give this day to you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sarah. I just want to remind you again to go ahead and engage with us online. Pastor Dave is online. He can answer any of your questions that you have. If there's any questions about the passages that I cover today or uh, any of the topics on there, feel free to do that. Give us a like, a thumbs up. Let us know who is in attendance. Uh, we'd love to be able to track attendance that way. We want to be able to get better at this because we're going to do it again next week. Uh, so if there's any suggestions there about the sound or anything like that, anything that we can do, uh, please let us know. Also, when the service is over, and I'm going to remind you again at the end of the service, please take this and share it so as many people can be blessed by all that Jesus is doing around our country right now. I know there's hundreds uh, and thousands of different churches and just a few I know of in our area that are live streaming their services today, and what a blessing it is to do so. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, as many of you know, I started working back in the school district again, and probably my most favorite part of working in, with kids in general is I love to give kids high fives, fist bumps. I love that random hug that a kid will come up and give me. Uh, that is probably my favorite part of the job. But see, this week it kind of all changed. I had to kind of start pulling back, not out of fear, but just knowing that we can't spread as many germs, which is why we're doing what we're doing today. And not to mention my own family has been ravaged by sickness and the flu and, and strep throat, and we got three kids with it right now, and so I didn't want to spread germs to any of them as well. But what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to promote fear to each one of them. I didn't want to say, hey, I can't high five you because there's something going on in our world today and we can't touch each other anymore. I didn't want to give them a spirit of fear or even panic. And as we know, adults know nothing about that right now, right? Like if you was to go in the grocery store aisle, I'm sure the toilet paper aisle would be full again today, but probably not. Personally, my hands are starting to dry out and crack due to the amount of times I've washed my hands each and every day. As a group, as a church, we are living in one of the strangest times in modern history. Between the news cycle, social media, and a shortage of toilet paper, some would think that we are living in an apocalyptic movie and we're all the stars of it. But here's the truth of the matter. As Christians, we live in a depraved world. We are the stars of the world. We should be the ones with the most faith, with the most hope, and displaying the most love at this time. When you find yourself in the grocery store, we should display the most kindness. Be the grateful and be grateful and share our hope with those that we come in contact with. What we should not be is the most fearful, selfish, spiteful humans that are walking around. Our conversations should have more to do with the blessings of Christ and less to do with the state of the political climate. We should focus on memorizing more scripture instead of sports stats. And more importantly, our love for Christ and others should stand out for the entire world to see. We are called to be messengers of this hope and to be the lovers of Christ. There is no better time than the present time that we are in now. So what passages do you lean on in times like this? What I would like is if you have a passage come to mind as I'm going through my favorite passage, comment and share it with others in the virtual church today. Let's share the same hope that we have. Let's remind each other of the words of Christ, the words that are in the Bible. My favorite passage is 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 24. It says this, starting in verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. But always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Uh, verse 16, this is, starts with my favorite part of this. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with content, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. 
May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. So what is God saying to us through this passage today? Well, the number one thing is, is to live in peace. Kind of hard to do in a time like this, right? It's kind of hard to live in peace when it seems like everything is crumbling around us. We tend to, uh, we tend to get very defensive in our own natures because we want to be very protective of those around us. But Jesus, or in this case, Paul tells us to live in peace. Number two, warn against disruptive behavior. We're in a time of crisis right now. Do not live a disruptive life, but live a constructive life. Do not be worried about the, the amount of toilet paper flying off the shelves. God will already provide what we need. Number three, be an encourager. Oh, if there's ever a time that we need to encourage one another along, it's right now. Look out for our brothers and sisters, which is number four. Help those weaker than you. I challenge you, if you have a neighbor right now who is next door, who's elderly, and they're out of toilet paper and you know that, don't just hold on to your hordes. Help them out. Practice patience. Whenever you go to the store, the lines have been long. Uh, just things are closing down, and it's very easy to become unpatient. It's easy as, as we grow in fear and anxiety to be less patient with even our kids or our loved ones. But give it back to Jesus and find some peace and patience in this. Number six, be someone who does good. If there's a time right now where we all need to stand together and do something good, it's today. It's tomorrow. It's the coming weeks. Get out and serve in the ways that you can. If it's uh, sharing what you have, if it's to help those that can't get out and to do it for them. If you're healthy, healthy and somebody you know is not, help them in whatever ways that you can that keeps everybody safe. In verse 16 through 18, we were told by Paul to rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So how can we even possibly be joyful in a time like this? Well, we first have to understand that joy and happiness are not the same thing. We don't have to be happy about the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. But we are called to be joyful. And here's why. I think the best way we can be joyful is by having a relationship with Christ. So if you don't know him already, I promise you there's no better time to find his peace than in this trying time that we're in now. Jesus gives us jo a, a joy that no other possession or relationship that we have can possibly give to us. Secondly, I think as a society, we have begun to realize there is more joy in our loved ones than the stuff or things that there are to do. Our family lives an extremely busy life. And at this break from work and this time we get to spend together in the next couple of weeks, I'm extremely joyful about that. I'm not happy about the circumstance. I'm not happy that there's people being negatively affected. But I am joyful that I get to bond with my family in a way that I've never been able to before. So what does it mean to pray continually? Well, when we look at the Gospels, Jesus was constantly retreating to go pray. Jesus spent 40 days and nights fasting and in prayer. Jesus stayed up into the night when his disciples fell asleep to pray. Praying when our head hits the pillow is a good idea, but it shouldn't be the only time that we retreat to Jesus in prayer. We should pray throughout our day before we make important decisions. Uh, right then when somebody asks us to pray, we should pray for them in that moment. Prayer shouldn't happen only when we want Jesus to do something amazing for us. It should also come from a form of praising him in the most challenging times of our lives. I challenge the church, each one of you, and, and each church out there, if somebody from other churches is watching this, let's get a concerted effort together, either where we share the same time that we're praying for our nation, as we know our president called uh, today to be our day of prayer. But if it's each church takes a different hour, if each denomination takes a different hour, where we're constantly in prayer, guiding together through this challenging time, I know that we're going to see something major happen in our world. How can we possibly even be thankful at this time? Well, I'll tell you some of the things that I'm thankful for, and maybe you will agree with them. I'm thankful to live in the greatest country in the world, despite everything that's going on today. 
I'm thankful to have a family and friends and a church support system that is there for me. I'm thankful for a church that still provides worship in times like these. I'm thankful for the extra time I get to spend with my wife and my kids over the next couple of weeks. I'm thankful for the medical professionals who are willing to keep going even when they are tired or even exposed to the same virus that we are concerned about. I am thankful for a Savior who gives me peace and comfort in a time that could cripple me with anxiety. There are so many things as I reflect that I can be thankful for, but it's all about our perspective. So right now, while we're online together, as you think about it, what gives you joy and the things that you're most thankful for, I encourage you to share and comment below on Facebook the things that you are thankful for, the things that you are joyful about, so we can spur one another along as Christ has commanded us to by sharing each of our perspectives. As the church, we have the opportunity to share the love of Jesus like we have never had in our generation before. There's a community of people who don't have the same hope that you have, and so share it. There's a neighbor you know who needs compassion, so extend it. There's someone in the grocery store who needs kindness, kindness, so bless them. Church, we have a time to shine the light of Jesus brighter than we have ever seen in recent times. So it is my prayer that you remove the lampshade of fear and hopelessness and brighten the world around you with the love and hope of Christ. So as I mentioned, our president called us to a time of prayer. So I'm going to take us into a time of prayer uh, before we close out the service. I promised yesterday I would keep it short um, so you can go about your business and your busy lives today. But I want us to really focus these next few moments in prayer. If you would stop, as awkward as it may be, being alone at your own house or with a group of people, if you're with your kids, if you feel comfortable joining hands with other people, or if you want to stay away to keep the, the, the spread of germs away, that's great too. But join me in a time of prayer so that we're all lifting up the name of Jesus at the same time. Jesus, we come to you come to you humbled, we come to you uh, full of hope and full of joy and full of thankfulness today. Despite everything that is going on in the world around us, Lord, we want to keep our compasses, our internal spirits pointed to you. Lord, we want to be the leaders of our community. We want to be those that share the gospel of truth, the gospel of hope, the gospel of love to those around us. Lord, if there are people that are uh, having to be forced to be uh, kept in their homes, Lord, we want to be those that are kept healthy to go out and help them. Lord, we want to come together at a time like this, not just with this church, but with the larger church as a whole and this community as we have met numerous times before. Lord, we want to be able to meet the need of those around us. Lord, we want a revival of hope to take place, a revival of love to take place. Lord, we want your peace to be able to transcend from this very point in time, Lord, today. Lord, we want your spirit to spread out like a wildfire into our communities so that in the moment of despair and in the moments of hopelessness and the moments of fear, Lord, that you come and you wrap us up in your arms and you bless us, and you guide us, and you direct us in your ways, Lord. Lord, this is not the first time that the church has ever experienced uh, an epidemic or a pandemic. And if we look throughout history, if we look through the, the plagues and, and the black plague, and we look at times of smallpox and different times, there's always been this time of fear. But the church can come forth at those moments, that they can stand up, that they can be the ones that rise up against the evil of this world. And Lord, that we can, uh, we can begin to be that light that you've called us to be. Lord, we ask that we do not live with the spirit of fear, but that we live with the spirit of boldness. Lord, that we can be so bold to go out and to do the work, the continual work you've called us to do, to be disciple makers, to go and to make people know about you. One relationship at a time. So while we're in the middle of practicing social distancing, Lord, I pray that you give us an opportunity to find new and creative ways to share the gospel like we are doing right now as we are live streaming on Facebook. Lord, we thank you for such things as this, Lord, that we have these technological advances that we can do this. And Lord, that people can still attend church from, from the comfort of their own homes, the safety of their own homes. And Lord, I thank my brothers and sisters around the, the city today, around the country today, that have chose to do this right now. 
And Lord, those that have chose to gather and, and to not meet like this, Lord, I pray that you uh, place a, a hedge of protection around them, Lord, that no virus will enter into that facility today. And Lord, that you, right in this moment, are getting all the praise and all the glory around the world that you deserve. Lord, we pray for our government at this time, both for our president and, and for Congress, for all the heads. Lord, we pray for the Democrats and the Republicans. We pray for the left and the right. Lord, we pray for the political process in our country as it's uh, constantly full of turmoil, it seems like, as we turn on the news and, and it seems like the world hates each other. Lord, we pray for a time of peace. Lord, we pray for a time of comfort. Lord, I pray that there is an image that we can all see and we can all witness where Republicans and Democrats come together in prayer. Lord, where we're not mocking one another anymore, where we can gather together and we can love one another the way we used to love one another, Lord, and that we can find more common ground in this crisis than we have ever found in our lives before. Lord, I pray that the church will gather together, that we will lock arms together, that we will be the most united organization that the world has ever seen in these moments right now. I pray for my brothers and sisters across the nation who are uh, trying to figure out how they're going to do these things, for the businesses that don't know how they're going to stay open, the mom and pop shops that are, don't know how they're going to keep their businesses alive. Lord, I pray that you will be, just be a peace in the midst of that storm. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for a Savior who guides and directs us in the ways that you've called us to. A Savior who, in the midst of a storm, still can be the peace that we need. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for all that you've given us in the past. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do in the future. Lord, we just ask that you would continue to bless us, guide us, and direct us as we go forward in these trying times. And Lord, until we all meet again next Sunday, Lord, I thank you so much for being there for us each and every day. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. I'm going to go ahead and, and direct you to the fact that uh, the church at this time uh, and this and this uh, hour of our country is probably going to be uh, the backbone of an opportunity to be able to serve others around us. So it's still important that if you uh, normally come in and you give a tithe check, feel free to mail it in. Uh, the, the office staff will come in intermittently and be able to handle the business affairs so you can uh, send a check in. Also, there is tithing online. We, if you go to the website, which is danvillefirstnaz.com, you can give online as well. Uh, also, pay uh, or, or stay tuned because on Facebook, uh, through different uh, the website, we'll, we'll be looking for opportunities where we can serve our community uh, if those uh, opportunities arise. So please listen and be prepared to serve in whatever ways we can, which is not in the large gathering, but as we maybe send teams of people to do things that are necessary. And uh, I just ask, you know, normally we would do like a meet or greet, uh, fist bump each other from afar, give each other virtual high fives on, on the internet down there, continue to comment and, and share and, and tell each other how much you miss each other meeting today, uh, but you can still do it through the virtual uh, avenue of Facebook. And also, don't forget to like and share the service. If you share this service, somebody who maybe uh, couldn't make it into church or who hasn't had that opportunity, they can share it with somebody else. They can also share it through Facebook Messenger, even if they don't have regular Facebook. Um, so we will be having services like this again next week. We will have it at 10 again. Uh, I'm not sure who will be preaching at this time. It'll probably most likely be Pastor Dave as we try to get back to some sense of a normalcy. And we just want to wish you a happy day, a blessed day, and a day of peace. May you go forth and be the church in these hours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.